Hey beautiful people and welcome to another episode of the State of Flow podcast. My name is Lena and I'm so glad to have you here with me. And so today is going to be a little chat about the real pandemic, which is not coronavirus, but stress. And before we're going to get more into this, first off, this is our second video podcast, which is also available to watch on YouTube. And secondly, I have been having technology troubles with the audio of this podcast due to equipment that hasn't been working like I wanted it to, needed it to work. Typical Murphy's Law. So bear with me if the podcast quality at the time is not the greatest and not ideal. I'm not the technician. I'm just here to talk. Um, so I'm still working things out. Anyways, bear with me. So stress. As many of you might know, this is a topic I'm super passionate about anyways. And something I always come back to in my practice as a holistic health coach and Ayurvedic practitioner when working with clients. And although the ultimate goal for me is to help people to really find their full empowerment and really start to thrive in life again by ridding themselves of all the symptoms that are actually creating the roadblock in between them and their greatest potential in order to gain access to our greatest potential. That's the key, the access. You know, it's so it's true, but it's so easily said that we all have this unlimited potential Oh, that's true. But the key factor is to gain access to it. You won't be able to access your greatest potential if you have all those symptoms, all those ailments, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, if you're just cock blocked and they're standing standing in your way. So, and this is why, even though I help people with their self empowerment and you know bringing more spirituality into into their lives and holistically deepening this connection with their bodies and the body's needs and elevating their mental health and so forth in order to really create their flow state and thrive what it takes me back to when working one-on-one with clients the first few steps are always stress release or holistic purification and detox as I like to call it and I will get into all those things deeper in a minute but basically Stress is a subjective thing, you know. If we say that stress is objective, we'd say, oh, we make ourselves a victim of our environment. And, you know, living in victimhood, again, it's something that's in between you and accessing that greatest potential, which will be impossible if you're victimizing yourself for your lifetime. So talking about stress is inspired by my passion for it, but also after having heard um, experts in the field talk about it on podcasts, Dr. Mark Hyman is amazing for it, as well as the video this morning by Bruce Lipton, who was talking about that even now in the face of the COVID-19 crisis, it's not the virus that's devastating, it's the stress. And, you know, I've been saying that weeks ago that whether a virus or not, once we come out of this crisis at the moment, which is not necessarily or not just a health crisis, but it's a political and economic and social crisis because we're all forced to be on house arrest, or many of us are. Um, When we're coming out of this, I think the biggest, biggest, most important thing is for many people, their mental health. And I feel like we might, unless people start to really be aware of their stresses and start to look after their mental health holistically and you know prevent from going down track with that we might see some really oh just devastating cases of you know mental health decline um finances and that's affecting a lot of people at the moment is the number one um reason for stress and then stress is the number one root cause for disease And further going into that, why I'm so passionate about it, um, you know, I also am passionate about a lot of things, but um, other things I love to work with with my clients is hormone balance, gut and mental health. And I always say that gut and mental health is so interconnected. And that is because 
your immune system and your nervous system is so interconnected and works in synergy. And let me keep track here because I keep going on tangents. So that's why I want to talk about why it's so important for your immunity and for your overall well-being and especially for your immunity towards viruses and anything else, any chronic disease, anything else that could possibly happen to us. Um, we got to start with eliminating or managing our stress first. And that's where I come to say that stress is subjective in the sense of that, you know, stress is inevitable. Like we're going to experience stress at some level at any point in our life every day. And we need to because if we think of our stress response, it's a natural instinct. It's a natural response. And not only that, it's a necessary survivor response. Um, I actually used to run workshops on holistic health release and power and thrive and an online course is to come when it comes on that um yeah i used to love talking about the brain waves and the fight and flight mode and stress response and that's what i want that's what i want to dive into just a little bit just to really you know raise awareness around stress because we're all experiencing it every day most of us i'd say 99 percent of us maybe 95 are experiencing stress way too much in their lives and we're not aware of it like I've got so many clients come and see me and I got this questionnaire asking what's your stress levels like from a scale of one to ten and people are like oh like you know two or three and then we go a little bit deeper in the questions and it turns out that they're working 80 hours a week in their entrepreneurial business that they're mom of two that um you know they have they're volunteering and they have another three hobbies on the go and yeah like you can't tell me that you know your stress levels are two or three out of ten so stress is something we all it's so right in our faces it's so obvious that we've normalized it and that's the problem that's why none of us recognizes stress as stress anymore and that's a major major problem because stress is this number one root cause of next to all elements we could possibly experience. So let us quickly talk about how the stress response and how and our body works and how stress actually affects our bodies. So basically, let's go back into the day of, um, back into the day, you know, back in the day of um, caveman times. So back then, as hunter-gatherers, we would use, have to use our stress responses, our survival um, response for dealing with predators or just big, big hazards that, you know, are a threat to our lives. So say back then, your stress response would get activated when a tiger snuck up to chase you. So what happens is... That in terms of brain waves from your normal alpha brain waves, which are kind of the normal semi slow ordinary wave um, wavelength and um, intensity for our normal wake state when we're just present when we just are. So from those brain waves, alpha brain wave state, we're jumping up into beta brain waves, which is the state where we're alert, where we're on point, where we're in fight and flight basically. What else happens to our body in fight and flight? Basically, we tense up. Our breathing rate increases, our heart rate increases in order to pump more blood and circulation out of our center and digestive system into our limbs to get us ready to run for our lives, literally. So it impacts our digestion. It slows our metabolism and our digestion down while it brings the heart rate and the um, breathing rate up in order to bring all this oxygen and nourishment to the limbs to get us away as fast as possible. It brings us into this heightened only now kind of state. Act now. Alpha brain waves. That's it. We're not thinking about tomorrow. We're right here, right now. We're so alert. And it releases stress hormones in our body, which are adrenaline and cortisol, um, which are the hormones that are responsible for when, you know, when you've injured yourself, you fell or whatever, um, and you're bleeding and you're not actually noticing the pain yet that's due to your body's stress response due to the cortisol and adrenaline 
that signalizes the nervous system to just keep going and to kind of bring the nervous system's attention away from all those little minor and relevant things in that moment because it's all just about survival nothing else matters right but also the more stress hormones are active and floating around in our body the more receptors they occupy and that means that there's no space and no energy for releasing and producing other hormones for our other body functions and sending them around in our body for them to do their proper functioning because we are in the stress response which is then compromising all other body functions that are not essential in that moment now that's a good thing right when it comes to survival our bodies like are freaking incredible how everything works, this whole spiritual, energetic, biochemical, mechanical cluster that is the human being. Um, the problem is now just that these days we don't have the tiger chasing us anymore. These days what used to be the tiger has become our Facebook feed, the news in the morning, um, our work deadlines, our email inbox, our friends from all across the world which are beautiful but to which we have access 24 7 via those little tiny devices in our hands that give us access to the world and to all those information that are circling in the world as well in this day and age we receive more than a hundred times more information than our grandparents did in their entire lifetime due to ta-da, the internet which is amazing if you use it as a tool in moderation and it can actually be an addictive substance like a drug if you don't use it consciously and a massive massive either way contributor to our stress levels so because the tiger has converted over time um what's the word for that evolutionated um evolved <laughs> into all these things that are actually taking our attention every day that means that we spend so much time in fight and flight mode in this tense state of our physical and mental body which is then affecting our well-being not only in the long run but even right now if you really tune into yourself another problem is that obviously you know you learn through repetition and you also unlearn through repetition in that sense. So if we keep repeating, which we all do, to be in fight and flight mode over and over and over again, all day long, it's going to be increasingly harder for us to get out of fight and flight mode, to get out of those alpha brainwaves, beta brainwaves, back into the alpha brainwaves, or even lower um, your gamma brain waves and so forth for meditation and to really reconnect back to the spiritual act, um, aspect of yourself because these are the even lower brain waves we are in um, when we are actually relaxed and do our spiritual practice and so forth. So. Now let's also look into how else stress actually affects our body functioning. So we all know by now that, you know, there's a synergy of mind, body, emotions. One impacts the other. If your mindset is crap, then you're going to follow through with that in your actions. And if your actions are crap, like bad habits, like bad diets and so forth, it will vice versa negatively affect your mindset and your emotions and it's going to be this downward spiral or if you're aware of it and consciously make your choices it can be an upward spiral and one affects the other it's the snowball or domino effect so when stress affects our body like i already mentioned it tenses our body like and it does so many more things but overall it creates compression and tension our muscles are flexed and ready to go so we can run from the tiger our heart rate is up which actually increases the risk for a heart attack because the more we spend in fight and flight mode the more stress hormones are out and about in our body for our body to deal with 
and the more our heart is working over time like if you're a really stressed person your heart will have worked probably five ten twenty times as much or with as much intensity than a person who has a really nice and slow and simple life you know which has a massive impact on your longevity and your quality of growing old your quality of life because that's another thing that plays into stress you know that these days i hear it so often even from my mom um things like oh i don't want to grow old and sick and people's expectation of just because they're going to grow old they're automatically going to get sick too which is so not the case it's not one is not the requirement of the other it's not a non-negotiable we've created that through our lifestyle through our diet through the stress we put ourselves through day by day and out of the sudden we have chronic diseases and autoimmune diseases and things like alzheimer and dementia and you know which really don't need to exist like we naturally have the right and the capacity to grow old with grace to grow old and wise and beautiful and grateful uh, graceful and grateful and not old and sick that's something that's absolutely not necessary and that's your own responsibility and you are in charge of that if you take the reins of your life back and it comes back to the daily the small things the daily actions the little actions that you really choose on a day-to-day -day basis be it which meal you pick or when it's time to rest or what to say no to because it really does make you feel good and to find the balance with everything in life. So like I said again, tension is what's created when we're in fight and flight response in our body. So that then obviously also affects our emotions, it affects our behavior, it affects our physical body. Say the most obvious one, if our physical body is already tense, you know, most of my clients that come for body work always complain, favorite area for everyone to be worked on is neck and shoulders, which, oh man, I love it. But why is everyone tense in the neck and shoulders? That's a stress response, that's stress tension. You know, the saying of carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, that's exactly that. Different areas of the body and different organs are associated with different ailments and different emotions. And these are high stress areas. And it also comes from, you know, a compromised posture. And because we dedicate so much of our time daily to the tiger that's driving us into air fight and flight and stress response, we mold our body into that as well. So, you know, so many of us spend our day in front of the screen, big screen, small screen, phone, doesn't matter. But, you know, we tuck our shoulders forward. And then if you feel anxiety is a thing that hasn't existed hundreds of, year, hundreds of years ago, you know. And these days, because we're constantly overstimulated, so much information is coming in, so much there is to do, our mental health has drastically declined too. Really, these days, things are common, like anxiety, insomnia, depression, they're just PTSD that haven't existed in former times other than when you've got home from war, you know? And again, that's human made. Like, we're not naturally at war. What are we, what are we doing? And we've come to being at war with ourselves and our bodies and having our bodies as a source of suffering instead of a vehicle, a vehicle, Either way, to bliss. Um, so yeah, stress and tension on the body therefore causes vaso um, constriction, meaning that all your vessels are actually shrinking because everything else is tense. Your muscles are tense, so you actually create muscle tension, obviously, but also things like headaches and migraines, and you're gonna create essentially from an Ayurvedic point of view, you create a blockage in your pranic channels, like prana flow is blocked, Light, the flow of life force is blocked. And once your flow of life force is blocked, that's just to put it all real quick, it's gonna impact the amount of life force or oxygen going up to your brain. So now if your brain is compromised of oxygen, your thinking and your clarity and your focus and your concentration and your ability to make clear and logical and rational decisions 
is all going to be compromised. So once these are compromised, you're going to start to make choices that are just not the right choices for you, whether that's your diet or whether that's staying in a relationship that's actually toxic or the other way around or keep working your butt off in a job you hate for 80 hours a week for really not much pay and sleepless nights or whatever it is, you know, or even just little choices like having caffeine at four in the afternoon or having like a hell sugary carby snack at four in the afternoon because you're so chronically exhausted um that's all impacted by even just this lack of prana or oxygen to our brain so then all this can actually lead to what i just said with the caffeine to addictive behaviors you know addiction is not heroin it is but it starts way before those levels addiction even starts with if you have to have a sugar snack every afternoon at between three and five o'clock because otherwise you don't make it through the day and you need to pick me up that's already an addiction or if you can't get out of bed without caffeine otherwise you're non-functional it's an addiction it's all addictive behavior you know it's might be a hard pill to swallow to you know but be real with yourself if those things are going on for you or even just if you can't get out of bed before eight nine o'clock in the morning you have to drag yourself out although you already had eight to ten hours of sleep that's also you know this just i don't know getting into standby mode in bed kind of addictive behavior because you're so chronically exhausted that your body starts to rely on those artificial or like unnatural and non-beneficial habits for you to make it through the day and then you find yourself being in survival mode instead of thrive mode and that's a massive massive difference like so we're all going to survive and then eventually we're going to die but are you going to thrive in life or are you just going to survive and again the more we get down into this survival mode and you know live then of sugar of caffeine or need to have even just one beer after work but if you have to have this beer after every day of work in order to switch off and come back to life addictive behavior like you're diluting or trying to um oh, i can't think of the word but you're trying to just um get out of reality for a moment you know and instead of dealing with what reality really is like and that's not to victimize yourself of oh my god what I'm <clears throat> what I'm experiencing right now is so stressful but it's dealing with the reality of looking at your life and realizing okay what are you doing that's fulfilling you what are you doing that's actually stressing you out how much is it stressing you out and how can you manage that stress by choosing the better options instead like have yoga class after work instead of having a bottle of wine at night and you find that as soon as you make this choice and or even just a nature walk you know as soon as you make that choice over having that beer first it will very often actually eliminate the craving for that drink for that beer or whatever altogether <clears throat> and that's what you find with you know food is another massive cause for all sorts of ailments or like the soup um, food like substances we call food it's a massive root cause for a lot of other ailments or um, general ailments we're going through as well but again stress is kind of the overseer of it all because stress is what's gonna make us crave all this crappy crap food you know it's not if you're feeling amazing and if your body is super healthy and your blood is rich and nourished and purified and there's no toxins in your body you're not going to crave sugary stuff and carby stuff and packaged and processed crap food and fast food it would be a non-existent craving for you because your body is overall balanced and healthy but as soon as you let stress impact you and you don't manage it it's gonna change your body's current makeup your body's current state and then the body needs a substitute and then you start to crave all these crappy things so we could keep going on about this over and over again you choose it's your responsibility whether you're gonna spiral up or spiral down <clears throat> and quickly speaking of all this i also mentioned earlier that our immune system and our nervous system are so closely related and that's where i want to talk about 
indirectly the current um you know COVID-19 pandemic I don't want to go into that theme at all because there's so much oh about this coronavirus story out there and so many different truths and who knows what to believe it'll be an interesting one to patiently wait out and see what's coming from this but the big thing I want to talk about is immunity whether coronavirus or not you know we get flu season every year comes around flu season and I mentioned that in my previous podcast about um, managing a balancing vata dosha which is very prominent in seasons of transition and so vata dosha because we are um, because things are changeable mobile and you know temperature and humidity changes and so do we because we adjust to the natural rhythms that's times where we're most susceptible. That's where our immune system is the weakest because we're not grounded within ourselves on any level. Like our physical body is not grounded because we're currently undergoing this environmental changes of you know different temperatures from summer to autumn, from autumn to winter, and different weather patterns and so forth that our body and you know the lightning uh, lighting changes like the sun sets earlier. We have less hours of sunlight, so the body is for a couple of weeks around the equinox in this little limbo of like, oh, wow, what's going on? It's a little bit wobbly here until we find our balance again, right? Makes sense because we are part of this natural ecosystem, which is Earth. Now, that's a form of stress. Speaking of stress, you know, I said earlier that we undervalue stress for what it is. Like we don't, we've unlearned to see stress because we're constantly stressed. It's our new normal. But the truth is that stress starts on a way smaller level than already having the anxiety and already having the depression. It starts way before that. Stress starts the minute you, you know, I said that before, get up in the morning to work, sleep through your alarm and you have 10 minutes to brush your teeth, to have coffee on the go, to have your food in the car on your lap and to run to the office and almost be sweaty. And if that's the start of your day, that's already stress. A stressful um, energy you've started on, you know, and it's always easier, easiest to maintain the frequency you're already on, whether negative or positive, than trying to raise the frequency from there, right? <clears throat> That's why morning routine is so important, and I'm going to talk a little bit more um, morning routine in another podcast that's coming up. So every time we are stressed, it's impacting our nervous system because instead of the normal hormone production that keeps balance in the body, it keeps us nice and calm and grounded, we get all those stress hormones going on. So, you know, remember, all alert, all tense. So this tension even alone has an impact on our nervous system, which is running through our spinal cord and which has endings and nerves all through our body. And so that's being triggered as we tense up. So as our nervous system gets triggered and gets impacted, our immune system and system is getting impacted as well because of this different hormone balance that's now going on that really is an imbalance. Um, because, you know, cortisol, adrenaline are rushing around in our body instead of all those other beautiful hormones, like our happy hormones, um, that we that would usually be with us when we're in a normal wake state, when we practice gratitude, when we're present, and so forth. So with this current pandemic, you know, I think that the biggest risk for, mo- for all of us, even regardless of your age, for every single one of us, is to be impacted by the stress of it through the fear. And that's the problem right now. You know, I just mentioned there's so many truths out there. Who knows what actually is the real truth? But whatever you believe in that's actually going on, fact is that mainstream media and celebrities and the whole mainstream information line is spreading fear. It's a pandemic of fear. It's a pandemic of stress. You know, the virus is whether it was man-made, whether it was out of laboratory, and whether it's a mutant, whatever, but it is a form of a flu virus that has mutated over and over, but it's a form of, of a flu virus. A virus is just a virus. And there's been studies done, and that's what I heard in the video today by Bruce Lipton, um, about people um, 
how they're being impacted by frequency, like 5G frequency, for example. And they came to the conclusion that obviously, yes, people living in a building beneath the 5G tower are going to be impacted by the frequency, but the only ones who were actually impacted with symptoms were the ones who were already stressed. And there's been other studies done with viruses and things too, because, you know, we all carry viruses within us. Like we are a walking germ, basically. We have more, we're made of, 10 times more bacteria cells than human cells. So we're basically walking bacteria, um, fact. So we carry all this dormant viruses around with us that might never break out. And you know what? If you live a healthy, holistically healthy lifestyle, they will never break out and you will never have symptoms. But you might pass this thing on to another person who is already stressed and therefore their nervous system is already impacted and therefore their immunity is lowered or weakened and they might get that virus and will actually have symptoms that you never had and never will have so the difference here is that i think what's way more dangerous than this virus going around at the moment is the fear that's being spread and it's so 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 important that you don't buy into that and, you know, it's easier said than done because so many of us are going through some sort of hardship at the moment, whether it's financially or otherwise. There are a lot of people and I feel you because I'm there too. So it's easier said than done to, oh, you know, don't buy into the fear because then there's our little ego mind that's just grabbing a hold of us and being like, but what if, but what if, what if I lose my job? What if I never get my job back? What if I and the mortgage and the rent and this and that and this and that, you know? We could spend our whole life worrying about the future and the what ifs and they might all never happen or they will happen because we then create our belief system accordingly and become a warrior, a chronic one. Or we just don't, you know, don't worry about things you can't influence. Don't try to control things you can't influence. And right now, the outcome of the pandemic, you can't really influence right now. What you can influence right now is how it's going to affect you and therefore how it's going to affect the ones around you. So sometimes on those harder days, you just got to be disciplined and practice to not let the fear catch hold of you. You know, there will be days where it's not easy to not buy into the fear, to not buy into the worry, to not buy into the overthinking. But these are, that's the medicine we got to start with. You know, medicine is not drugs and surgery. These are the last instances for when it's too late, for when we're in disease Stage four is Ayurveda, we call it, you know, that's where Western medicine comes in. But we get to start at stage one and stage one is, shit, I actually start to overthink and to worry, okay, what are my tools? What's my medicine to snap me back into positivity and being present? Do your breath work, do your meditation, eat your healthy food, stay away from junk food, get enough sleep, get good quality sleep, shut your devices off before you go to bed at least an hour to prepare yourself for sleep, have a good night's sleep, then, you know, get up early, go with the natural cycles, you know what's good for you, like, we all know how to live healthy, you know, sometimes I say being a health coach, I love what I do, I really do, do love it so much, but at the same time, the fact that health coaches exist is ridiculous. The fact that health shops exist is ridiculous because what does it make everything else you find in the supermarket other than in the health food section? Have you ever thought about this? Our health should, it should be our natural state. And yet you have people like me and a lot of others that are health coaches or naturopaths. And you know, which is crazy. Um, so yeah. We all have this medicine that's available to us every day that we are, you know, our guru is inside here. And if we listen to our own guru, to our own soul wisdom, to our higher self, if we just take this moment to take a few breaths, reconnect back into our heart, and you will know intuitively what's good and healthy for you and what there is for you to do in order to lift yourself up and elevate your frequency and not buy into the panic when you notice yourself starting to do it. That's the first step of medicine. That's the natural medicine we all need right now. So remind yourself of that. You know, instead of whinging and trying to boost your immunity when it's too late, please don't think I put it down onto Western medicine because it does have its place. But there's so much more prevention we can do instead of let it come to those way more drastic scenarios. 
you know, in, it's so much easier to just prevent any weakness, any depletion, any immunal stuff instead of trying to fix it when it's too late. And there's so many really simple, really easy tools available to us that are so profound and it's really worth using them. Look after yourself on a daily basis. Be conscious of your choices, of all the choices you make. I'm not saying never eat a donut, but you know what I mean? Like it's all moderation. Look after yourself, make the right choices. Check in with your mental state, check in with your emotional state. Check in with your physical state, then adjust your actions, adjust your habits, right? Beautiful. So I'm just going to leave with that. Be aware, guys. Keep your stress levels down. Check in with yourself. Maybe go and journal and really look into what is stressful in your life right now. What honestly are your stress levels? Write down everything you're doing every day, like everything, checking the emails, checking your Facebook, doing your work, doing your shopping, making food, everything that you do on an average day. And then you rate it, um, how it makes you feel. And so you either give it a rating that's a plus, a positive, and that can be from one to three, like it makes you feel good or it makes you feel really good, which was for you, it would be plus three. Or you give it a negative rating if it's stressing you out, it just doesn't make you feel good. It could be a minus one. Or if it's really hardcore stressing you out, it's a minus three. And then check and compare how many positive activities or tasks or time slots do you have in your day and how many negatives and where's the balance of that and how can you create more positives. That's a great practice to do. Like get real with yourself, journal about it, meditate on it, think about it. Get real with your stress levels and start to manage them. Don't allow yourself to be a victim of the environment. All right, guys, I'm sending you so much love. As always, you find everything relevant in the show notes. Join us in the Facebook group, the State of Flow podcast community group. Um, which I'd love to become a really interactive, um, beautiful space holding community. I'd love you to be part of it. Check it out. And I'll see you in the next episode. Sending you lots of love. All right, guys. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I'll see you. And I'll see you next time. And leave comments. Let me know if there's anything, um, any requests, any questions you might have. And I'll see you very soon. Sending you lots of love.